on IWTV News. Deja vu. The Iowa Western baseball team is regional champions. Again. Deja vu all over again. The Reavers host the district tournament. And remember last time? Deja vu. Big Blue goes mountain climbing. And the summit awaits again. And deja vu all over again. Does Iowa Western make it to the top or not? From the campus of Iowa Western, you're watching IWTV News. Hello and welcome to IWTV News, a very special baseball edition. I'm JJ Davis. Now, you know, nothing really new from this corner of the world. It's pretty much a foregone conclusion this time of year that the Iowa Western baseball team just makes mincemeat of the competition and route to another trip to the College World Series. And this year is no exception. The Reavers just blow right through the regional event, winning three games, all three by a combined score of 28 to 3. <laughs> Iowa Western is home to the Northern District Championship Tournament, winner to the College World Series. Now the Reavers, at 50 and five, have won 32 games in a row. That's a lot of runs. Go 27 and 0 in conference, 24 and 0 in the regular season, and 27 and 0. I, I've just, I've never done that before. You know, uh, I've lost one, two, three games, but to, to go 27 and 0 throughout is just amazing. I think what makes us somewhat dangerous is, is um, the sporadic uh, throughout the throughout the lineup. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know. That's, yeah. You know, uh, you know, it's been my 6-7, you know, my 5-6-7 or my 6-7-8. That's okay, because that's gonna happen. You know, when someone's not doing it, there's another link in the chain that's going to, and I think that's what makes you more uh, more dangerous. Rating my pitching staff overall, I just I don't know if I've had a staff like this. My three best arms, uh, when you're looking just overall this year, you know, Sean Chandler, Indigo Diaz, and Keaton Wynn, who comes out of the pen. Uh, I mean, they're as good as anybody in the country. For me, what I've learned is if anybody is really trying to coach and really throw like what you say that wisdom out there now you are way too late hey we've been talking about this 24 hours a day for eight months handle just just handle it be where your feet are and do it for the guy on the left and right of you and and create some memories and we'll all be better for it Iowa Western has been better in the past. Try 17 times. Now, last time Big Blue hosted the district tournament, the Reavers took home the plaque and then the 2014 College World Series trophy. It's a journey that never gets old. Never indeed, but how about a Rocky Mountain High? But first, what do you think of three up, three down when we come back? From the campus of Iowa Western, this is IWTV News. Okay, so the Iowa Western baseball team has been there, done that again at the regional shindig. Next up, the Northern District Tournament. And of course, it's always nice to go to bat at home. The last time the Reavers did so, try 2014. Iowa Western came up big and won. So how about four years later? Here's our very special baseball correspondent, Brent Pentecost. The Iowa Western Reaver baseball team hosts the Northern District Tournament. First up, only Central from Olney, Illinois. Sophomore right-hander Indigo Diaz is off to a hot start. 
two strikeouts, and then a little help from shortstop Kobe Highland. And the Reavers sit down the Blue Knights, one, two, three, in the first. Third inning, and Cole Evans singles through the gap. Endelkopper drops the sack bunt, and then Evans moves to third base on a wild pitch. Center fielder Tyler Reichenborn then drives a ball to deep center. And Evans scores in the sack fly. Reavers lead 1-0. Kobe Highland showing off his offensive skills, singles past the second baseman. Then Ryan Sullivan lines one into left field, and Highland puts Iowa Western up 2-0 in the third. Diaz, still dealing, strikes out the side in the fourth for three of his 14 strikeouts. Ronald Sweeney gets a two RBI single down the first baseline in the fifth to further the lead, 4-0. Indigo sits down another blue night. He goes eight innings, giving up just one hit on the afternoon, and the Reavers bounce the only central blue Knights, 8-0. Well, obviously, Indigo Diaz stands out. Um, eight innings, no walks, 14 strikeouts, and one hit. I mean... That's, that, that's what stands out. Uh, we got some two out hits when we needed to uh, with guys on base, which, which always helps win championships uh, when, when you uh, are able to do that. We take advantage of errors. Uh, they had, I think, four errors. And I think every time other than the first inning, we took advantage of that. Uh, just trying to get ahead of hitters. That was the main thing. Uh, biggest thing for me was just being able to get ahead of guys and then put them away when I needed to. I mean, honestly, just stay within ourselves, have fun, play for each other, and then just handle success. Timely hitting and making their opponent pay for errors. Iowa Western moves on to play Wabash Valley in the winner's bracket of the Northern District Tournament. IDUB takes on number three Wabash Valley in game four of the Northern District Tournament. Sean Chandler on the hill for the Reavers, picks off the runner at first, then strikes out Brian Fuentes to end the first inning. The bats start hot. Brandon Benna doubles down the third baseline. Reichenborn, who reached on an error, scores and the Reavers are up 1-0. Now time to show off the defensive work. Kobe Heinlein tracks down a high pop fly and makes the diving catch. Next at bat, he fields the ground ball from Sam Wilson and throws him out at first to end the top half of the second inning. A walk and an error put two on as Ronald Sweeney comes up to the plate. He says, see ya, and puts it over the right field wall. Reavers now up 5-0 after two innings. Sean Chandler finding his stride. He sits down three batters on strikes in the fourth inning of his 11 total on the day. The lone blemish on the afternoon for Chandler. J. Paul Fullerton goes deep over the right field wall. Warriors trying to claw back trailing 6-1 in the sixth inning. Jordan Bonk says, nah. He finishes the ninth inning for the Reavers, inducing this double play. Iowa Western wins 6-1. One of the biggest, I think, cliches that's true in baseball is two out hits win championships and that's what you got to do in a game like that is take advantage of a few errors and even when you got two outs you got to have good at bats and you got to get base hits feeling good um just continuing the win streak uh winning's become a kind of a thing for us so uh all we gotta do is not change anything and just keep moving so I mean, I'm pretty confident. Man. The team right now has a great approach up at the plate. That's what it's all about. Um, not trying to do too much up there. Stay within yourself and uh, barrel of baseballs. After two impressive performances by the Reavers, they advance to the Northern District Championship game hosted at Doc Ross Field on Sunday. For IDUB Television, I'm Brent Pentecost. Thanks, Brent. So two up, two down. One more win, and Iowa Western is off to the College World Series once again in Grand Junction, Colorado. And the way the Reavers are playing, it looks like it's a done deal. So once again, here's IW TV student Brent Pentecost. Northern District Championship game from Doc Ross Field. Number two Iowa Western takes on only Central, looking to extend their winning streak to 35 straight. Reavers lose the coin flip and are the away team today. 
Sophomore Tyler Reichenborn leads it off with a single. Shortstop Kobe Highland gets an RBI double down the line and Reichenborn scores. I-Dub up 1-0. A wild pitch advances the runner. Then the throw is off target and Highland comes in to make it two zip Reavers. Ben Dotzler strong in the first inning, finishing it off with two strikeouts. Third inning now, a Nebraska Omaha commit Braden Neck out, doubles to left center, bringing in three runs and the score to 6-0 Iowa Western. Blue Knights not out of it completely as Damon Maynard sends one over the left field wall, trimming the lead to 6-3. The Reavers tell their pitcher they got his back. Eckout puts another off the wall for a double and brings in two runs, giving him five RBI on the day. Then Reichenborn does the exact same, bringing the sophomore Eckout in. Top of the fourth, Iowa Western scores six and the route is on as they lead 12-3. Coach Reardon calls for sophomore Keaton Wynn in the final three innings. He smokes the Blue Knights with seven strikeouts in three innings pitched, and the Reavers punch their ticket to Grand Junction, Colorado with a 19-3 triumph over only Central. We talk a lot about uh, about momentum. You know, that gave them a little bit of momentum. It cut the lead in half, and, and so it's really big to just try to get that momentum back. And uh, that's what they did, and they did a really good job of it. It's ecstatic. I mean, we've been working at this all year. We like to say we're the hardest working team in the country, and it just feels really good that all this work has paid off. I think we feel really good as a team and individually. I think we have a really good shot at doing well out there. Favorite part of the tournament this weekend is obviously this part right here. You know, everybody's out here, family, friends, and we're just celebrating the win for the moment. Uh, favorite part as a Reaver is just how we bonded so well. You know, this team and the team last year. Just Reardon preaches for us to have like a great culture, and it's truly what we have here. With 35 straight wins, Iowa Western stays hot as they make their 18th appearance at the Junior College World Series in Grand Junction, Colorado looking for their fourth national championship this upcoming weekend. For IDUB Television, I'm Brent Pentecost. Thanks, Brent. Staying alive. That's the word from Sam Saplizio Field in Grand Junction, Colorado. Not a bad way to start either. Like old times, practice makes perfect. After the break. Okay, it's decision time. I want flexibility, more doing, hands-on experience, and working sooner. I gotta make a choice. I wanna get started, now. Find your path at iwcc.edu and get hands-on real-world experience. Start now at Iowa Western. It is like old times at the College World Series. Iowa Western rolls into Grand Junction on a roll. Second ranked, unbeaten and like forever. Things are looking good. Now coaches have told me over the years that that first one, that first game in any tournament is always the toughest one. So what about the Reavers? Now here's our very special World Series correspondent, Brent Pentecost. Number two Iowa Western opens up the JUCO World Series today against number three Chattahoochee Valley. The Reavers, riding an absurd 35 game winning streak, will look to stay hot here in Grand Junction and make it 36 straight at Sam Suplicio Field. Iowa Western's baseball team making the program's 18th Junior College World Series appearance. Shortstop Kobe Highland stays hot, notching a double on the top of the first inning. But the Reavers cannot bring the Houston commit home, stranding him at second base. Chattahoochee Valley strikes first in the bottom of the inning. A single by Rankin Woolley brings in Davis Schwartz, who drew a walk, and after one, Iowa Western trails 1-0. Picking it up in the top of the third, Kobe Highland drives it way back over the right field wall for his second home run on the season, and the Reavers take the lead 2-0. Still in the top of the third, Ryan Sullivan says, Kobe went right, I'll go left. Another two-run bomb, this one over the left field wall, his fifth of the year, and Iowa Western takes a hold of a 4-1 lead. Reavers! Woo! The Tulane commits Sean Chandler mowing down batters, a 1-2-3 inning in the bottom of the third for the Reavers. To the bottom of the fifth, the Pirates load the bases full. 
Rankin Woolley brings in two of his three RBIs in the day on this single, and Chattahoochee Valley cuts the lead to 4-3. Seventh inning, and Coach Raritan calls in sophomore pitcher Keaton Wynn. He strikes out three in the inning, but gives up the game-tying single to Jason Rooks. We're knotted up at four after seven. Kobe Highland having himself a day, belts a single through to open the eighth inning. Right fielder Brandon Benno would drive him home on the single to left field, and the Reavers once again take the lead and add one more for a 6-4 lead. Top of the ninth inning, Highland hits into a fielder's choice. But the shortstop Jay Muse misses on the throw and Ross Endelkoffer scores, giving the Reavers a three-run cushion. Keaton Wynn, a bit shaky in the ninth, gives up four hits and two runs, but strikes out three and preserves the win for Iowa Western 7-6 over Chattahoochee Valley. By far the best team I've faced this whole year. Um, just did a great job um, just competing with me, I mean, fighting off pitches. Uh, you know, hitting the outside fastball, hitting the inside fastball, hitting the slider. Uh, just all around good job for, for them. I mean, tip my hat off to them. Uh, but I just, I just kept grinding and, and just hope for the best. You know, I, like I said, I just, my approach was just throw strikes where I needed to be and execute pitches. And whatever happens, happens. So that's what I try to do all day. I mean, we've won 36 games in a row right now, and that's probably maybe one of the first times I've just acknowledged it as saying that right now. But, I mean, I'll give these guys props. I mean, there's, you have to have, get, we've had games like this, you know, I mean, within 36, winning 36 games, I, I wouldn't say it was, they're all the cal caliber of that team and what they can do, but, you know, whoever is gonna go deep into this has to find ways to do that. I mean, even if you don't play your best game. I told Adam afterwards, I was like, man, those two pitchers, the two starters, I hope a lot of people appreciated that because those two could, they, they just flat out competed against each other. I mean, they just kept matching up with each other. And that's that's fun to watch. I mean, I, I can appreciate that. And I would be saying that same thing if I was sitting up here on the losing side. I mean, you got to appreciate that side. But then on the other side of that, both teams can sit there when we go back to our hotels and be like, man, we should have won by more. You know, and Adam can say, man, we, we should have won. I mean, that's what happens you know, within your team, but that's the game. You never really play just a perfect game. You got to find different ways to compete and win. Honestly, it feels super good to get that first one. I mean, <laughs> I'm not I'm not the most powerful guy on the field. So when you get one out, you just you just kind of have fun with it. So maybe not exactly as Coach Raritan would have wanted in his 11th appearance in Grand Junction to start, but a win was gladly taken. The Reavers get back at it on Monday night with a matchup against 18th ranked College of Southern Idaho at 8.30 Central Time. Thanks, Brent. Now, it doesn't matter when you get this far. I've said it time and time again, just win. Now, Big Blue has the day off. Iowa Western is a team of routine. The Reavers want to maintain their daily routine all the way through. The Reavers, fresh off an opening game win over Chattahoochee Valley, take no time off and head right back out to the practice field, ensuring that their mindset stays deadlocked on a junior college national championship. Um, I really tried this time of year, I really try to leave them alone a lot. Uh, obviously, I'm involved in practice. Uh, I keep a, a, a sense of uh, business-like at practice. Um, yeah, it, it's lighter than what a normal practice would be for us, but they need to stay locked in. They, they need to respect the game even when we're not playing the game. And today was another day where we wanted to make sure we practiced right, uh, got something out of it. Instead of spending time, we wanted to be invested this morning in our efforts. And uh, same thing now, we're going into the weight room. So you just try to keep them in the routine that we've done since August even though it's almost June. Sophomore first baseman Ryan Sullivan, who hit a two-run home run in the game one win over the Pirates, talks about the feelings inside the dugout for the team. I think I played pretty well. I think as a team we can still do better, which is crazy. I feel like we didn't play our game and we still found ways to win it, uh, especially when they tied it up 4-4 and then we had to come back. And uh, I just love how we came back like that. I think it's awesome. Someone starts it off and then we got to get the job done. We know that. We're all brothers and play for each other, and so I think if we keep doing that, we'll be successful. Assistant coach John Penn making his first appearance at the JUCO World Series got quite the surprise when he showed up to the game on Saturday afternoon. It was actually really special. Um, it's my first time ever being in a World Series, and um, I tried to get him out for the district at our place, and last minute they said they couldn't come, and I mean, I was kind of bummed, and 
uh, it's really hard to get something past me. And actually, Tuesday night on the way out here, I had this, this split second thought of, I wonder if my parents were going to come out here, but it, it fleeted and uh, my mind got moving on other things. But when I saw them, it was, it was special. With the wind behind them and all sights set now on the College of Southern Idaho, Iowa Western is preparing now just like they did at the start of the season, with their eyes locked a little harder on a fourth national title for the Reavers. Thanks, Brent. Coming up next, Heartbreak City. Just when you think this could be the year on the other side. So far, so good out in Grand Junction, Colorado. The Reavers get that first one out of the way. And there's a reason the College World Series is a very special event. There's a reason only 10 get to come to the plate. And there's a very special reason why anything can happen when they get this far. An opening game win at the JUCO World Series offered the Reavers an extra day of rest before their next tournament game. They head back to Sam Suplicio Field for a matchup against number 18, College of Southern Idaho, for a Memorial Day matchup. The Reavers get the opportunity to play in the marquee fireworks game on Memorial Day. Iowa Western again loses the coin flip and will play as the visitor. Leading off the first inning, Tyler Reichenborn sends one to right field, but it's caught. And the Reavers go down 1-2-3 in the inning. Sophomore Michigan State commit Indigo Diaz gets the start for Iowa Western. The right-hander a strong first inning and sits down all three striking out David Huddleston. The Reavers still can't figure out sophomore pitcher Mason Fultz as he sits down the first nine batters. The wheels start to come off for Indigo in the third inning. An error and a hit by pitch followed by a single loads the bases. Two walks bring in a couple runs for CSI as they take a 3-0 lead at the end of three. Top of the fourth now and freshman Ronald Sweeney gets the first hit of the evening for Iowa Western but the Reavers strand him and cannot tally a run. Mason Foltz is able to keep the Reavers at bay as Iowa Western struggles to figure out the CSI pitcher. The Reavers find help in Isaiah Peterson. The freshman, normally an outfielder, comes in and pitches three scoreless innings, recording six strikeouts, allowing just one hit to give the Reavers a chance in the ninth inning. Back-to-back -back singles by Kobe Highland and Ronald Sweeney, then Ben Snyder gets hit by a pitch, and the bases are loaded with a tying run at the plate in the top of the ninth. Brandon Benna walks, and the Reavers are on the board 4-1. Tanner Holland then hits a sack fly to right field, and Iowa Western cuts the lead to two. But Mason Spears lines out to the shortstop, and the Reavers fall to CSI 4-2. The, the game the other day was a little bit better, not because we won it, but, um, you know, six hits each. Uh, today, uh, error. Uh, we had an error, dropped the ball first. That one scores. I mean, you're looking at a 6 2 ball game, uh, or I mean, a 4 2 ball game that could be way different. But that's life, man. It isn't, you know? So uh, that's, what, that's what we have right now. After having their winning streak snapped at 36 by the College of Southern Idaho, Iowa Western will look to rebound against the defending national champs, 13th ranked Chipola, in an afternoon matchup Tuesday, May 29th. After a loss to the College of Southern Idaho snapped the Reavers' 36 game winning streak, Iowa Western looks to bounce back in the double elimination tournament. Next up at the JUCO World Series, the defending national champs, 13th ranked Chipola, on May 29th. The Reavers win the coin toss and play the game from the home side on the afternoon. On the mound for Iowa Western, sophomore from Ida Grove, Iowa, Ben Dotzler. He gives up an early hit in the top of the first as Morgan McCullough slaps a single to center field and Francisco Urbaez scores. Indians take a 1-0 lead. Top of the second and Julio Carrion sends a ball to deep center field, extending the Chipola lead to two runs. That spells the end of Dotzler's day and freshman Jordan Bonk is brought into the game. But the Indians stay hot at the plate. More from McCullough, the sophomore from Seattle, Washington, crushes a ball to center, giving the Indians a commanding 6-0 lead. In the bottom half, Reaver offense with some life. John Hawk hits a sack fly to score Ross Indelkoffer to get the home team on the board. Iowa Western 
down 6-2 after two innings. Indians add another run in each of the top of the third and fourth. We pick it back up in the bottom of the fourth. Sophomore Brandon Benna is at the plate with the bases juiced. He smashes the ball out to right center, 421 feet for the grand slam. That trims the lead to 8-6 at the end of four innings. Reavers down three in the bottom of the fifth. When Spruce Grove, Alberta, Canada native, Kobe Highland says bye-bye and launches his second homer of the World Series. And a four-run fifth for Iowa Western ties the game up at 10. Top of the sixth now and an error by Highland at short allows the Indians to take the lead once again as McCullough scores. It's 11-10 Chipola midway through the sixth. To the bottom of the seventh and Chipola still holding that one-run lead. Freshman pitcher Jared Howe throws it away and Iowa Western brings in Indelkoffer and Kremensky for a 12-11 lead, their first of the game. Top of the eighth in Braden Neckout, normally a third baseman, comes into pitch for the Reavers and he sits down three consecutive batters for Iowa Western to hold the lead. Top of the ninth, Reavers up 13-11, two outs on the Indians, but Morgan McCullough, three for five on the day, five RBIs in the game, including two here, and we're tied once again at 13. Bottom half, drama building. Reavers with two on, two out. Cole Albers with a liner into left. Hagen Homestead rounding third, but he's thrown out at the plate, sending the game to extra innings. Top of 10, the pitch gets by catcher John Hawk, and pitcher Jared Howell slides into home. Indians recapture the lead at 14-13. Iowa Western looking for one more response, bottom of the 10th, on their last legs and it's just not their day. They fall to the defending national champs, Chipola, 14-13 in 10 innings. So this is just one moment. Uh, at my age, it even hurts because um, I hurt for these guys, but uh, um, it's, you know, it, you're, you're getting blown out, you're back in the game, um, take a lead in the game, it's a game of momentum. We have two outs in the ninth. They don't quit, um, neither did we, but they didn't quit and they get a chance and they tie it up. And I mean, it was just, it was a good game and horrible to be on this side of it. It sucks to be on, like coach said, on this side of it, but I, I, I'm proud of our team and I'm, yeah. we fought really well. Quite a season for team 44. Even though it didn't end as they had hoped, they made numerous memories and an amazing 36 game winning streak was nothing to scoff about. From Grand Junction, Colorado and the Junior College World Series, I'm Brent Pentecost, IWTV News. Thanks, Brent. So there you go. So close, but so far. The Iowa Western baseball team enjoys yet another highly successful season, culminating in another trip to the College World Series. Now you can't win it every year, although it would be nice. <laughs> and so, for this latest edition of IWTV News, a very special baseball edition, I'm JJ Davis, and as always, I'll see you around campus. IWTV is online. Like us, follow us, watch us.